So here it is. Did I just attach a bunch of crap on here to get a nice clickbaity thumbnail? Okay, okay, maybe a little bit, but, but hear me out. So right now I can hit the record button from right here. And now we are recording on this setup. I'm also monitoring audio, which is a must. And I have a microphone for my voice as well as this light. But at the same time, I'm also recording Sam over there. And I think you need a little bit of lighting there, sir. So I just turn on the aperture that's pointed towards you as well as a microphone that is recorded on a separate channel. So now I have the flexibility to cut between both of our cameras and use one audio track or the other or both if I want to. You could do like a little podcast just like this, huh? Yeah, at what age was the last time you sharded, Gene? Uh, my point is that everything on here actually serves a purpose. Are you gonna go out and rig out your phone just like this? Probably not. But what's cool about this is depending on what you're trying to shoot or set up, you can borrow pieces and parts of this setup and customize it to how you want it. So let's go ahead and start from the basics. We're doing our first stop at Target to pick up some things. This must be it right here. These must be very valuable for it to be locked up. Can we get this too? What is that? It's Do like Dojo battle? So you yeah, look how much fun they're having in the box. Wait, this looks like laser tag, but with swords. First accessory right here, lightning to headphone jack adapter. Old iPhones used to come with this, but not anymore. Did you actually buy that? Yeah, ninja swords. Oh my God. We're gonna battle like ninjas from the future. <laughs> All right, so we got our very first accessory right here. And if there's one thing I don't like about vlogging on the phone, it's the audio quality. Right now, it might not sound too bad, but if you have a lot going on or if it's windy, it's gonna start sounding really bad really fast. So we're gonna plug this in and this is gonna allow us to hook up a microphone onto here. But keep in mind that there's a difference between TRS and TRRS. They look very similar. They're the same size pretty much. So it's very easy to mix them up, but they may not be compatible with each other. So this is a TRS and this is a TRRS. And the way you know is you can count it. It starts from the top is the tip, and then there's one ring in there and then a sleeve. So that's a TRS. Here, this is a tip ring, another ring, and then a sleeve. So this is a TRRS. Now this lightning adapter is a TRRS. A lot of phone accessories are TRRS. So if you plug in a regular microphone, that's just a regular TRS, you plug it in, it's not gonna recognize it. Two things you could do, you might be able to get a cable that is a TRRS on one side, or you can also run it through an adapter like this. So this will receive a TRS, plug this into the phone, and now your phone should recognize your microphone. And there, just like that we have great audio quality coming out of this phone but now the problem is we have two separate devices so to consolidate that this is the simplest solution I found this is made by small rig you can go ahead and place that wherever like on a table but you can also close it hold it as like a little vlog setup and then you can attach your microphone up top like that piece of cake now my favorite phone is the iPhone 12 Pro Max but this setup should work with pretty much every other iPhone that's at least somewhat recent I think so this is the iPhone 10 and what? 10S? Yes. Wait, how does this work? You just like whack each other or what? Yeah, oh, you just attacked what? me. Okay. Are you guys about to battle now or what? It is time. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Yeah. You guys are so dead by now. Yes! <laughs> So let's make this more interesting. Whoever wins this next one gets a hundred bucks. I'm gonna film it in slow motion. Make it look more epic. What are you gonna do yeah. with your new earnings of $100? Just blow it all on drugs. No, I buy groceries. <laughs> yeah, better answer. Yeah. Okay, there's kids watching, all right? Don't stop being such a shitty influence. Anyways, yeah, how did that battle look? Another thing I noticed is that the stabilization on the 10 isn't as good as on the newer ones. But anyways. Yeah, dude, you look super wealthy right now. This is all of my houses. <laughs> I've been driving around for a quiet place to film and this is where we ended up. It's really nice here. You know you're in a really wealthy neighborhood. As you drive in, you see signs that say vacation homes for $1.5 million. It doesn't say like, oh yeah, live here for one point. It's They know who they're targeting. Half of these homes are probably empty. You wanna just go in one and yeah. just start living there? 
This, this is incriminating evidence. <laughs> now looking at the footage from the iPhone 10, I think it looked all right, but it could definitely use a lot of improvement. I think the biggest issues I had with it was the lack of image stabilization and also the lack of wide angle options. So if you're on a 10, it might make sense to upgrade because it is more pleasant to vlog on an 11 or 12 because of that stabilization, wider angles. But if you already have like an 11, then you know there are upgrades going up to like the 12 Pro Max, but those differences become more minor. Dylan, I thought you said this was your tennis court. Where are the keys? Yeah, it's so exclusive, I don't even have the key. Are They're you sure room. this is your tennis court? Of course it is. Why would I lie? Dylan, Literally. how rich are you really? Oh, you know, like second only to Jeff Bezos. Elon Musk is actually now number one. Well, okay, third, I guess, technically. Now, a problem that I did have with the earlier setup was that the audio quality, sure, it was better because we were using a better microphone, but it did clip a couple times, and basically that means the audio was recorded too loud, so it kind of sounds like this. <laughs> It's not pleasant at all. And we can prevent that by controlling our audio levels. One way to do that is with an app called ProTake. Now it's free to install. There's a bunch of useful features in here that are completely free. And then you can also get a subscription which will unlock a few more features. I first heard about this app from Maddie Hapoya. See how it says resolution, 4K, frame rate, 24 frames per second. You can go ahead and adjust your resolution and it's as straightforward as it gets, which is why I like it. Right now it's 4K, 128 megabits per second, but you can adjust the bit rate, which is cool right there. If you want to adjust your frame rate, you just tap that. But what we're looking at right now are these audio levels right down here on the bottom. So I'm going to tap that. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in a microphone and now you will see that this external icon will light up. So now we're switched over to external microphone. So it's nice that you can monitor it and also see how there's these two little arrows right there that lets you know that you are recording external microphones. So it gives you a lot more information about what your camera is is doing and of course now we can control our audio levels and by doing this this should prevent so much audio clipping now protake is sponsoring this episode so we are giving away an iphone 12 for a chance to win you just got to drop a comment within the first six hours of this video going live and what do they comment hippopotamus okay that's the word hippopotamus somewhere in the comment for six hours you have a chance to win an iphone 12 and not just the you know basic 64 gig the lowest one no we're gonna hook you up with the middle one, not the top one, okay? I already had to pay Dylan 100 bucks for doing that sword fight earlier, so I'm trying to stay on a budget. Let's go into some of more of the free features. If I go into the settings, I can go between 8-bit, 10-bit, HDR. So I love how it gives you a lot of control over what you're recording. And also, you have different modes of stabilization, and you can go into cinematic, or extreme and you see that it has some latency so if you do record in these settings then what you actually look at is gonna be delayed the audio right now is live but the visual is delayed but because of that you get this ultra smooth stabilization so in some cases it might be useful but a lot of times you could just leave it in standard and that would be your typical stabilization but that's just one of the cool features you get now if you look at this little color wheel right here you could bake in some looks so some of the free ones would be like a vlog so you could see that it kind of neutralizes the colors a little bit and i believe there's a couple others that were free and they're actually pretty fun to experiment with but i ended up going ahead and paying for it so now i have like alexa 709 so this is supposed to imitate some of the colors of the airy alexa i actually had some fun playing with the different film emulations and then we go here and we have movie inspired like here we have transformers so now it looks like we're in a michael bay film and you could also adjust how strong these looks are as well so you could really push it or put it in the middle. We have her Roma. We use this setting to get some really sad looking shots of Dylan. Oh, check it out. There's a Saving Private Ryan look. Look at that. Dylan, pretend like you're in Saving Private Ryan right now. Go. Now, one of the paid features, see how it says auto right there, we can go ahead and switch that now that I have the paid version and we can go over to Pro. This is gonna give you full manual control over the settings. And again, I do like how intuitive this app is. It's very straightforward, very easy to figure out, which is why it's my personal favorite. Let's go ahead and switch into dual. So now this is the setting that we saw earlier where it's recording two cameras at once. And then they also do have aspect ratio, safe areas. So I'm gonna throw some links for ProTake down below. Definitely 
definitely worth checking them out, even if you're just planning on using the free features because there's enough in this app to make it worth your time. All right, now we're just chilling here in Dylan's gazebo and there's birds chirping in the background and stuff. Now this right here is where it's at. It's the, the bee's knees. What is that anyway? Bees don't have knees. Now this is an adapter made for iPhones by Rode. So we have a lightning connector up here, but the beauty is we have two separate mic inputs right here, as well as a headphone jack. Beauty of this thing is that it keeps the audio channel separate. Now the adapter we used at the beginning of this video, I tried a bunch of different ways to try to isolate the audio tracks, but if you hook up two microphones to that adapter, it just mashes everything together. And it also has a headphone jack so you can monitor the audio live. Now it is a pretty pricey adapter. It's about 80 bucks, but I think it's worth it because not only can you use it to record video, but there's a free app called the Rode Reporter and I'm able to hit record. And even if you're not trying to use your phone as video, now it is a recorder of two separate audio channels. And then if you want to, you can sync this up with whatever camera you want. So that's really cool. But even if we just pull up Pro Take, you can see that the audio levels are still being recorded separately. Do keep in mind that both these mic inputs are TRRS. So if your microphone is a TRS, you're gonna need an adapter. But now that we have two audio channels, that opens up a lot of different possibilities like this. I have one microphone pointed in each direction. So even if I'm talking or someone over here is talking, we capture that well. Another option is to have two separate lavaliers hooked up to this one phone and you can wire up two people. One thing to keep in mind is when you control audio levels through the app, you only have one slider control. So you can't really independently control the audio levels on the microphones. So if you're doing a setup like this, you probably at least want one microphone that has control over how much gain it is. Now these wireless lavaliers may not have as much control, but you still have three different levels of output. You just have to get the output levels similar on the microphones and then you just use that one slider to control everything. Now this setup only has one cold shoe slot, but if you wanna attach two microphones, you can easily split it up like this. This one's made by Ulanzi, and I believe Rode makes one right now that's a little bit shorter, which I probably would have preferred, but they're back ordered right now, so I just ended up getting this one. Now you can attach two different microphones. Now being wireless is great because you don't have to worry about being that close to this microphone. And this is probably one of my favorite setups along with the Rode microphone. And it does come with a clip, so you can just clip it onto your shirt if you wanna do it that way. But these are pretty cool. This is uh, Undercovers by Rycote. And I like these because they're these little pre-cut out stickies that you can peel off and you stick the microphone on there and there's these different colored fuzzies. This one's black, so I'm gonna use that because I'm wearing a, a, a dark shirt. Stick that right there. So it's super easy to attach. So now with this setup, I'm recording with the shotgun mic that's mounted up top, which usually tends to sound a little bit more natural. But as I walk away, I'm not glued to the phone because I can be all the way back here switch it over to this microphone and now I don't have to worry about how close I am towards the microphone and if I didn't have this lavalier I would have to be shouting if I'm all the way back here so I love that flexibility of having two different audio channels you don't have to worry as much about where the microphone is and being close to it it's always on me and now that I'm close I can go ahead and switch back to the other shotgun microphone and you have all this flexibility isn't that cool now when it comes to these phone grip slash tripod things. I guess this one's probably my favorite, although I do still feel like there's room for improvement. But the reason why I like this one is because one, it telescopes out so you can make it tall and have it stand. There's also two different stages of how wide you have your feet. There's already a cold shoe and two quarter inches side to side. So you could attach all kinds of stuff on here as well as a Bluetooth button. But the reason why I don't love it is because I do have to fiddle with it sometimes. Like for example, if I wanna very quickly open it up and set it down, you can't really because this bottom part kind of sticks out. So in order to fix that, you do have to rotate it and then you know just slightly bring it up so that's just like an extra step and if it's just your phone up here it's not really a problem but once you start adding a couple different microphones up here it does tend to dip sometimes so then you just have to tighten it more you really have to tighten it to have it to lock into place one thing that I think will be really cool is if the cold shoe was rotatable by 180 degrees so if I'm filming like this I wish I could just rotate the microphone so that it would turn around and face me and it would just kind of click into place and you could switch it back and forth I think that'd be really cool. And since we have two slots for quarter inches, I have a articulating arm with an aperture MC at the tip of it. So this can just screw on here if you're really just trying to get your rig to become crazy. But the more stuff you have, the more cumbersome that this gets. And I think a, a good thing to do with vlogging is to try to keep it as minimal as possible. So just really, you know, pick out the things that you really need and want and just use those. A few more things that you could consider would be 
like an ND filter that you could attach on here if you're trying to control your shutter speed by going fully manual. And Polar Pro makes some pretty solid ones for the phone. There's also a few microphones that you can literally just plug straight into the lightning port and it just hangs off the side here. I haven't really tested any of those, so I don't know, I'm assuming they're good. And of course there's the option of throwing it on a gimbal, although I would say the new phones have such good stabilization already and I don't really like finessing with gimbals, especially when you have a bunch of other crap attached to it already. So I personally just go for a little tripod. But again, the older generation iPhones didn't have as good stabilization. So if that's the case, then it probably makes more sense to use a gimbal. It's also worth keeping in mind which lens you're gonna use. This one has three in the back and a selfie camera right here. So let's start with the selfie. This is gonna be the easiest because of course you can just monitor what you're recording. You can see yourself. It's a pretty decent wide angle. And again, the iPhone 10s and before, they tend to be a little bit tighter, so it becomes a little bit harder. But what I like about these new ones is that the selfie cameras are nice and wide. So I could hold it out and get a pretty good wide shot. I could almost get all the dogs in one shot, almost. But I'm gonna go ahead and switch to some of these rear lenses. And this is the ultra wide angle, which is personally one of my favorites because you know you get everything in the frame, which is nice. And also right now, since I'm filming blind, look, I'm only looking at this lens. I don't see the screen. So because of how wide it is, even if my aim's a little bit off, I know I'm still in frame. So I like that. But downside is that the low light, not so good. It's definitely the worst out of all the lenses when it comes to low light. So if you're filming in the dark or you're in a dim lit place, I would avoid using this lens. And then there's the telephoto, which I would only use if you're trying to zoom in really far. And then this is just your standard 1X wide angle lens, which is probably the best lens on this camera. It's not as wide as I'd like it to be, but it has a good big sensor. So in low light, this thing's gonna be really good. You get a little bit of shallow depth of field. So that background's a little bit blurry, which is kind of nice. Honestly, depending on how good my lighting is, I shuffle between all the different lenses. But anyways, this video is getting super long. So let's wrap this up by reading a couple comments from my last video where I kind of talk about my experience of vlogging every single day for a year. The butt sprayer is an essential piece of equipment here in Vietnam. All right, I'm not gonna lie, the, the, my toilet, it's pretty awesome now. Every time, boom, boom. It's been awesome, my butthole never been cleaner. Link in description for, imagine if I just sell a bunch of boudets and that's just like how I get all my affiliate money. We call them a bum gun here in Thailand, pew pew. In Japan, like my mom has one and it's like a little robot in a computer. You type in a code, doo -doo -doo -doo, thing comes out and it's like preheated water and sprays it. But I like this cause it's just simple, you know, Carrie kind of complains about how the water's cold, but you know, hey, it works. Finally, an American washing their butt properly instead of wiping only. I seriously can't comprehend how how do you people wipe only? It's not even close to being clean. I do honestly feel like once you boudet, there's no going back. Potato, vlogs in the bathroom. Me, yup, this is normal. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna become my new set, guys. Every video, I'm gonna start right here. Actually, sitting here has actually made me realize I do actually have to use this bathroom. So, that's your cue to leave.